So this morning, I just got back from going to Carlsbad's Tavern, which is now Robin Hood Brewery, and before that, Home Delivery Pizza, and before that, I believe, Spectators, and then Carlsbad, and then something, Froggy Notion, and then Countryside, something to that effect, and, you know, um, that the name has changed a lot over the years, and so has the establishment remodeling and just like any business but it's important to go back to the scene okay and i hesitate to say scene of the crime um but i'm pretty confident a crime took place there whether it was an abduction a kidnapping and she was removed from there or whether she died there may or may not be able to ascertain a final conclusion on that but I think that's the route it's going. Again, you have the runaway theory, which I, I don't think has much merit, but I will let that run its course. So for me, it's different than a lot of other investigators. Some investigators that I've met, uh, they have no interest in going back to a crime scene. If they do, that's cool. If they don't, it doesn't matter. But for me, it's imperative. And I speak about this a lot because... Um, it's just something I really believe in. Now, you ask, what can you get from going back to the scene 33 years later? Well, number one, the feel. Now, you know I don't believe in psychics and things like that, but I do believe in like a feeling, like a gut feeling and atmosphere. The bar atmosphere changed. Robin Hood Brewery and its clientele is totally different from what Carlsbad's Tavern was. Carlsbad's Tavern was a, uh, a live music venue where Robin Hood Brewery is different. So I, I went back there today to get the feel of things and Mark from Robin Hood Brewery gave me a little bit of a tour of the inside. The men's bathroom being the same, same location where her boots were found. Um, listen, the reality is I'm not really gaining anything investigatory wise from going back to that bathroom, but I feel I have to. It's just one of those quirks that I've got to do. I took a look outside the bar because that's important too. Traffic, roads, how much is it traveled? Parking lot size. All those things matter to me when I'm investigating a cold case. So to go to the bar, to stand at that front door where I know Brenda was, look out across that parking lot to where her car was, seeing the traffic, the road that would go by that I know she would have noticed as well. All those things were important to me today to go back to that scene 33 years later and see what Brenda saw. Again, may have no bearing, but for me, it's just something that I believe in and it's something that I've got to do. So that's what I did today. And as you will see, and I will narrate some portion of this video, um, things have changed in that bar. Front door, same location. Back door, we're not so sure about. Dumpsters, where were they located? These are questions that you'll hear that I ask Mark. Um, whether the road was paved or whether it was dirt. Um, location of Carl's office. Where the kitchen was. And it's verified, you know, there was a kitchen, which is important to me. Because if they were serving food, there has to have been a cook. There had to have been a chef. Who was it? I need to speak with them.
Okay. What time did he go home that night? Um, so many procedural issues with the bar that I'm still trying to get. I've been in contact with some co-workers or at least people that have worked there. Some didn't really have any information to offer, but there's some out there that I know have information and maybe not related to the actual crime, but procedural issues of that bar. Okay. Did you take the garbage out at a certain time? Did you leave it in there? What does cleaning the bar at the end of the night entail? I have an issue with her working her second, maybe third night in that bar by herself, closing by herself. I have an issue with that. Why did that happen? I just got information from Brenda's sister that she believes that Brenda had switched a night with an evening bartender or a weekend bartender to work the morning or something of that effect, but there was some sort of scheduling change. I need to know who that was with and what was the reasoning. So we're getting there. Okay. Still a lot of steps to go through, but again, I wanted to give you the audience to be able to see the bar, see what Brenda saw, take in what, you know, why I'm going there. Okay. Why it's important to me. Um, and to get that visual of that bar. Hey, I was at that bar when it was spectators, okay? Say 94. Okay, this happened in 91. I, I remember it, okay? Um, how much had that changed from when it was Carlsbad's Tavern? Mark will clue us in on that. And a lot of other uh, key information, good information to have about the layout of that bar. The clientele, so important. Does Robin Hood Brewery still get the same clientele as it did back in 91? Uh, Mark will address that. Um, she, you know, and you'll hear me ask question about, hey, is there a factory around here? Zero metal. Um, things like that that maybe work a 3 to 11 shift and those workers would come in after work to drink. Well, yeah, we have to know that so we can go back and get records from those factory workers and, and find out you know, if there's a nefarious character that's working there that we need to know about. So that's what I did today going back to the bar. And uh, I'll let you watch, observe, and listen to what Mark has to say. Check it out. And there's the entrance. Now, I don't know if that's the same entrance. But Brenda's car would have been right in this area. That was 30 some years ago too. Sure. So we're standing at the front door entrance and this is would have been where Brenda's car would have been parked. And we're here with um, Mark Lambert. Right? Yes. yes. And Mark uh, is going to give us a tour of how the bar was uh, back then, 33 years ago that he remembers, and the remodeling of it today. So if you could just walk us through. All right. I appreciate it. So we're coming in through the front door. Okay. So the bar would have been over where our dining room is now. The bar would be against the back wall. Um, and it would have been, uh, if my memory serves me right, like a U-shaped bar back here with some seating. Okay. And then the restrooms were where, our, where the restrooms are. We didn't change that at all. Okay. So we'll come back here to the restrooms then because that's going to be important. And then if you would have walked down here, you would have went down to a lower level, two or three steps down into a lower level where they would have had a dance floor. Uh, we would have had bands, what have you. The kitchen would have been off to the right over here. Um, and then where this wall is here for the bar wouldn't have been here. It would have went over to the back of the, of the building. Okay. So it would have been bigger this way, but this would have been cut off a little more for the kitchen. Okay. So kitchen over here, yeah. if they had bands. Bands, yeah. Like the stage would probably be, I guess, over in to here. I remember, I think the stage was off to the back here. Yeah. Like I said, 33 years ago. 
uh, of interest to me would be a back door. Where would that have been at the time? I know they would have had to have one for codes, right? Um, yeah, I'm not, I gotta be honest with you, I don't remember if we changed the actual entrance to the back here. Okay. If we walk back this way. Now the reason I wanna, I'm curious about that is if there was a dumpster back there during that time. It would have been the door here. Okay. Uh, right here would have been a back door and we have another back door but I don't recall if Which there was one? a, if that was there when we did the remodel or not or if we added that. Okay. Now this is all changed back yes. here. Yeah. yeah, this would have been dance floor back through here. Yep, yep. I oh, gotcha. Uh, and the bar would have came back this way farther. Okay. Because this wall wouldn't have been, I don't believe this wall was here. I think it went okay. all the way to the exterior wall. So this is where Brenda would have been bartending though? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. How about these windows and stuff? Were they there or no, was this all wall? No. This was all solid wall. And I don't really recall if there were any windows here, but we put, these are all new windows from when we remodeled. Gotcha. But I don't know if there was any windows there. Okay. Um, how about traffic? Uh, what is this, 550 out here? And then you have uh, a road here. I mean, is it basically the same as exactly, it was back exactly, then? Exactly the same layout. Okay. Uh, how about the building across the street? That would have been there. That used to be a roller rink years ago uh, back when it was Carl's bad I don't recall if it was, still was a roller rink but it was a roller rink at one time okay good so to know. everything really is not much much has changed how about this parking lot across the street that would have been there for the roller rink and so that would have been here in 91 yes okay now how about interstate 80 is probably uh five miles away, 10 miles away. Do you- um, Probably less than five. Okay, yeah. do you get truckers here? Do they come here with their big rigs and maybe uh, park not, over there? Not too often. Now, I don't know back then if they would have got that business, but they would have been able to park across the street here. Okay, but today? Uh, today, not not that often. Okay, good to know, good to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big difference in here than what it was then. Whole different vibe. Correct. Where they were, or, but the- But the toilets and the facilities pretty much in the there. Spot. Okay. So. So the men's bathroom, where her boots were found somewhere. Somewhere on the floor. But all this is, it's remodeled, but it's right. same location. Same location. Hmm. Okay, sir. Well, I appreciate it. I just want to get a feel. This is a little bit different because a lot of cases that I, I work that I'm not too familiar with and when I go to the locations, uh, I can't imagine how it was yeah. 30, 40 years ago. This I can't, kind of can because I was in here when right. I was spectators. Right. Only five times, but still. So. But roughly the same you know, a wall or two here or there where there wasn't one, but... It's hard to imagine right. something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm trying happen. to, you know, go back to when it was... I was in it more when it was spectators versus Carl's Band. I might have been one or two times when it's Carl's Band. Yeah. Um, probably showed up to see a band, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, that's what they were known for. So. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, known for that, and if you wanted to get in a fight, it was a good spot to be hanging out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's a great establishment, so I appreciate you taking the time. No problem. To no problem. On a Saturday. Well, uh, my son does all of my preventive maintenance, so he's in doing, doing uh, filters for all the equipment today, so I was going to be here anyway. So. I see. Uh, I, I'll ask you this question. Okay. You probably don't know the answer, but maybe because things are different. But let's say uh, 
let's say this uh, this opened up at 11 a.m. Right. It was Carl's Bad Tavern every day, 11 right. a.m. Some people were saying that Brenda she closed. She was supposed to close. So it was two o'clock okay. in the morning. That she was back in here. Supposed to be back in here at six. That's a little early. That's I what think. I thought. I would think. But listen, we come in. We open at eleven. Uh, the first person gets here at nine. Okay. To get open. Six is. I don't know what the hell That's she's doing. Pill. I don't know what she'd be doing. From six to eleven. That's five hours to get opened up. Right. I'd take four of it and take a nap. Yeah. If I close, if I was here till two and then get up and open it up so okay. you know being in at six I think that's well how about the f that she was uh, it was only like her second or third night so she's closing by herself is that a big deal yeah it is yeah yeah I would never we have a policy that there's one nobody's ever here by themselves in other words if if a manager is doing her into paperwork an employee or two stays with them till the, and they all go out the door together. Okay. And that's been a po I've had that policy ever since I've been in the business. You don't ever leave anybody alone. You, it's just would somebody that's trying to save money, obviously, like, hey, well, let's just have one or, person, or that, or just didn't care enough right. to care about. Okay. You know, didn't think of it that way. How would you want to put it? But how about it being a Tuesday? How much business do you think they would have had on a Tuesday night? It's hard to say. Back then, to be honest with you, business was more cash than it was today's almost all credit cards, so there'd be a, there should have been a lot of cash, you know, in, compared to credit card business. Well, what's the, like, clientele that you would get? Late? Yeah. Honestly? Like, Shitbirds? Yeah. Was, yeah the later it gets, so the, yeah. the rowdier it's going to get, the... Listen, when your mother said nothing good happens after midnight, she wasn't lying to you, you know, <laughs> well, in this business. Is there a, a factory or something that around here that they got, would go off at 11, you know, work 3 to 11 and would come here? Oh, back in, well, Ciro, I don't know if Ciro was still open, Ciro Metalworks yeah. might have still been open. Uh, Corning was probably still open up by the mall. Okay, that's not you, had the pri you had the prison that run shifts. Okay. Um, do you get any of those type of clientele in now after 11 o'clock? People coming in just for drinks after work? I'm not open. We're not open that late anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, 10 o'clock on the weekend, so I don't get I don't get the rowdy. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a really less headache. Yeah, you know? I bet. But you know, yeah. If, if first off, you have to put put it this way: if you're known for someone that's going to have bands and it's kind of. Uh, for lack of a better term, rowdy place, you're gonna get that's what you're gonna get. Yeah. Remember yeah. what I said, you know, hey, it's a good place to watch a band and get in a fight if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I, but I like I said, I wasn't in here that often, so it's, it's you can't it's hard to say what they would have had or you know what I mean. But yeah. but yeah, eleven o'clock at night if there's if the place is busy with people drinking they're you're, getting, you're, you're starting to get to that point where, okay, this is gonna, we're about to get fun. <laughs> right. You know, you know, I mean, look at State College. They, they're having uh, State Patty Days. They've got state, state police and police from other jurisdictions all over the place in here for it. Yeah. It, you know, add alcohol, you'll have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turns some people a different way, that's yep, for sure. It does. But, you know, I mean, I, w I could assume she would have a lot of cash just because people nowadays use way more credit cards. My credit card business is probably 90% wow. okay. on any given night. On a Tuesday night, they could have been dead, they could have been packed, and so now, who knows. Yeah. Okay. You know, but back then too, you also had more places to go. And this is the field where the tip said that she was, and she was missed. The road going right up by it. And as you can see, Carlsbad's Tavern is right there. This is the road. This little patch of woods down here, which I'm sure was searched.
and then field more patches of woods up here and this road intrigues me because it is a desolate road not far from the bar now through these trees there's a junkyard and I know that that was searched because that was in the paper but if you're kidnapping somebody you want to sexually assault them you want to get to a secluded place fields.